Flying IFR, we're used to being able to load an entire route with departure and route and arrival phases into our onboard GPS navigation and EFBs like ForeFlight. This goes for airline and corporate flying, but it also applies more and more to most GA IFR pilots, especially when we're equipped with a glass cockpit like a G1000. Almost all standard instrument departures, or SIDs, are available in our navigation database thanks to the database specifications of Air Inc. 424 the rules, so to speak, for what procedures can be included in navigation systems and how they can be loaded. The rules allow for almost all, but not all, SIDs to show up in our databases. Here, we're at Westchester County, New York. We've been assigned a radar departure, the Westchester 8, coded HPN8, with runway 34 as the active runway. Let's have a look at the departure plate, looking specifically at the instructions for runway 34. When we preview the departure on our MFD, we could follow along with it. The first instruction is to climb on heading 343, which is shown as the desired track on the first waypoint to 1,000 feet. Then we make a climbing left turn heading 295. This is the next waypoint, man seek or manual sequence. If using the flight director or autopilot, we'll be turned from the initial heading of 343 to 295, and then it's up to us and ATC to navigate via radar vectors or direct the next point along our route. So there's no ambiguity in the route in our database. Now let's contrast that with another SID out of Napa Valley in California. Steve the Star 803, you're cleared to the Mather Airport via the Merlot 3 departure. Radar vectors, Popes, that's Papa, Oscar, Papa, Echo, Sierra, to join Victor 494 to Sierra Alpha Charlie, direct, climb and maintain 5,000, departure frequency Oakland Center 127.8, squawk 4506. Here, our clearance includes the Merlot 3 departure. We again go into our departures for this airport, but we don't see the Merlot 3. We see the Lizard 5, the Napa 4, and the OZ 4, but no Merlot 3. It's tempting to tell ATC that we're unable to fly the departure because it's not in our database but we can fly this departure, and there's a good reason it's not in our database. Let's dive in. The instructions for runway 19 left and 19 right are to climb on heading 186, but then in parentheses it says, or ATC assign heading 130 clockwise to 270. So it's not clear from the procedure alone what heading we'll be flying on departure. Let's listen in to an actual takeoff instruction from tower to an IFR aircraft who's been assigned the Merlot 3 departure from runway 19 right. Eva Star 803, on departure turn right heading 250, 19 right, clear for takeoff. So the 250 heading assigned is within that arc from 130 around clockwise to 270. Rather than the first option, which is essentially runway heading 186, there's no way to program these alternatives into the database the way we saw on the Westchester 8 departure. Airing 424, which again are the specifications for what can be coded into our navigation databases, have a rule that excludes procedures that have more than one path for the same runway transition. We could code the procedure as holding that first option, 186 degrees off runway 19 right, but if ATC assigns us a 250 heading under that second option, as they did in the example, the procedure coding is now incorrect. The rules say we can't include a procedure like this. In reality, this isn't a huge problem. When assigned an initial heading on departure, we would fly that and expect a radar vector to popes. When told to proceed direct popes, we would activate that on the GPS and then navigate off the route from then on out. The absence of a procedure on your onboard navigation system or EFB doesn't mean you're not able to fly the procedure. You just need to have the published procedure plate as well as all the equipment the plate says you're required to have to fly it. The Merlot 3 is a pure radar departure. We're required to be in radar contact to fly it, but that's all we need for the departure specifically because we'll be getting vectors to our route. When you're assigned an unexpected procedure that doesn't show up, don't request something new until you've had a look at the plate. Remember that not all SIDs are required to be in there, and many ODPs, especially the textually depicted ones, won't be found in there either, and that's perfectly normal. For more training insights and full ground schools, check out Flight Insight today at the link here and in the description.